nice, Julie. Um, you know, Julie asked me to come over here and say the same thing. Well, because I'm an extemporaneous speaker, and I always ask the Lord to show me what I'm supposed to say at the right time, in the right way, at the right in the in the right tone for the for the audience. I told her, I said, well, I don't know if I'll be able to say it exactly the same, but we'll try to keep the principles uh, in place because that's what we're doing. Um, and I have to tell you, I appreciate uh, Julie saying that I don't get in sandbox fights because I don't. Um, it was my experience in the private sector that when people in the office were all fighting with each other and people, when I came back from vacation, everybody was trying to rat each other out. I said, you know what? A team has to pull together all the time. And I can say that a lot of the success of the tea parties who have lasted for 10 years, we in fact are 10 years old this year as well. I've been a constitutional conservative volunteer, full-time volunteer activist for 27 years. And so I guess, Julie, after you've been doing something for 27 years, you learn what not to do, right? So what we're trying to do is to focus people on the possibilities and focus people on principle. And before I get too deep into this, I want to tell you how a great speaker tonight and controller Hager. Uh, Glenn has done an amazing job as the controller, and I'm very fascinated and very supportive with what he wants to do, and that is to preserve our rainy day fund uh, and to keep them from spending it all, but to use it in ways that fill up some of the holes that previous legislative sessions have given us because we're underwater in a lot of really important funds. So give him your good attention tonight. Um, you know, principles matter, and they matter more than political personality. So what we've tried to do in the last about a year and a half is to put together an experiment called the Texas Conservative Grassroots Coalition. You don't pay membership dues, you don't have to show up to every meeting, and guess what? It is based on the premise that people, good conservative people, can work together and make progress on advancing liberty if we don't require each other to agree on every single issue. Let me say that again. We don't have to agree on every single issue in order to work together to do what is right for the people of Texas, for our great state, and for our country. Now, I would be remiss if I didn't say to you all, I know that you had some real disappointments in the election cycles. I know that you did. I supported probably all the same candidates that you all did. And it is disappointing when we work very, very hard and we don't get across the finish line and then we lose people that were important in the fight. Let me tell you what I know after 27 years. God has a plan and he has the best plan. And the best thing that we can do as conservatives is to try our best to find out what that plan is. Because he's smarter than us every single day and he sees a lot further than we do. So I would say that we need to try to encourage each other and encourage the uh, elected officials around us. I am a self-retired county commissioner, so I've been, I call myself a recovering uh, elected official. It is a, but because I have served in that capacity and have served for so many years as a, a confidant to people from the local level on up to people in Washington, um, I hear their hearts and I hear how much it hurts them when people bear false witness against them. So let me take for just a second, since we are into the 140 day siege, that's what I call the Texas legislative session because Julie, that's what it feels like is being under siege, right? And so, um, you know, what we wanna do is we wanna be careful that we don't simply become cut and paste leaders. Cut and paste leaders are people who go, you know, I'm really busy right now, and so I see this article, or I see something about an elected official, and it sounds pretty right, and so I'm just going to cut and paste and forward that on this issue. And I haven't talked to the elected officials involved, and I don't know really what, the, what their reasons were behind some of the things they did. And so sometimes we can do things unintentionally 
to damper the enthusiasm of our own conservative Stephen run for office. Because I encounter people all the time who say, you know, it's so nasty. After you're elected to office, you know, we're, we're the people that have your back. Because in some cases, the first time you do something that they don't like or somebody says, well, you shouldn't like what they did, before you know it, you're, you're on the wrong end of uh, their wrath. So we want to be careful that we do not bear false witness against our neighbors, against our fellow Tea Partiers, and against our elected officials. Because here's the thing. We all know that we have a shortage of really good, strong, principled people to run for office, right? Well, I can tell you as an elected official, sometimes it's a lonely job. Because if you're really fighting for reforms, and then somebody gets an idea that you're not quite doing it exactly the way they want it done, before you know it, there is nobody that has your back. Nobody has your back. I went on trial because I had some, some people that were out to get me and hated me. I mean, they will, to the day I die, they will say the reason they don't have a new courthouse in Smith County, Texas is because of me. Well, you know, some of those people decide that the best way uh, to handle a problem with you is to try to get rid of you. Well, I had some people that decided they would file a civil suit saying that I had violated the Texas Open Meetings Act. Did no such thing as there is no one who reveres open and transparent government more than I do. But I was able to go through that trial and I can tell you what God did for me in this and I'm hoping that you remember this story if you don't remember anything else I say tonight. It is absolutely true that when everybody else leaves you, God doesn't. Because as I looked out in that courtroom, I knew that we wouldn't get a settlement. I knew that it wouldn't be dismissed. I knew I was going to have to go through a trial. Well, you know, that's pretty, that's hard to take because you've been going, okay, God, you know what? What if people believe that about me? What if, what if, what if, what if? And so finally, I had to understand that God was going to take me through that because he was going to prove that he was going to stay with me no matter what. And it was disappointing to have some of my best friends in my whole life not show up in that courtroom for me. But you know what? I'll never forget the people who did. Just a handful of people. But God showed up every single day. And some of my uh, enemies, in fact, <coughs> one of them ended up acting as the prosecutor. And I was able to look her in the eye and answer those questions without flinching. And was exonerated. But I can tell you, God takes you through periods of testing and disappointments to get you ready for what you have to do next. And so I would say for all of you, there's never been a more important time in Texas than for us to stay active and to stay vigilant, even though we've been disappointed. Because I'm going to tell you, every day that I look at my Google alerts that I have set up on a number of elected officials, I like to know if they say or do something. I like to be able to tell, you know, what they're doing and saying so I can go back and check on it so that I can comment on it if I get a call from the media. And I like to keep an eye on them anyway and tell them thank you when they do a really outstanding thing. But I can tell you that the media over and over and over again, most of what we call the mainstream media, they are just gleeful over the fact that some of our Republicans won with only teeny tiny margins. They are gleeful and they are waiting for an opportunity to turn Texas blue in 2020. And I can tell you that we must get up on our feet. We must figure out how to work together. Now, I also know that we have some consultants on our side of the ledger and they're telling our people you just need to keep your head down you need to lay low and you don't need to be big and bold this session you just need to try to get through it folks that is a recipe for disaster in 2020 because when we offer texans conservative texans democrat light guess what we get people sit at home and people are getting, I think that's the reason that you see so many people that are, were eager to support someone like President Trump because he says it's straight. People want somebody who will actually fight for them and actually do what they say 
they would do. So I would ask you all to please do everything you can in the right way to hold your elected officials accountable that you helped get hired at the ballot box because and urge them to be bold. If we pass this legislative session and we don't get true, some true lasting structural reforms in property taxes, we will have made another promise that we just blew through. You know, we've been saying the last 10 years in the legislature that every session that we go by, that we leave some important conservative reforms on the table and undone, that we're passing all the easy exits off the big government highway in Texas. And so now, we're in a position in the House that it will only take nine squishy Republicans to unite with the Democrats to just deep six any conservative reform. So is it getting any easier as our numbers decline? No. So what I would ask you all to do is to please spend a whole lot of time trying to get God's way and his approach to what we need to do policy-wise. Because you know what? He cares about all of that because he cares about the future generations that will live in chains if we allow liberty to die on our watch. And I can tell you, I've told people over and over again, if we don't get a handle on voter fraud, election fraud in this state, and there are some things that I can't even talk to you all about tonight um, that are we hope are being investigated and that we're looking at, but I'm going to tell you what. When we get down to it, if we don't have elected officials who will stand up and end voter fraud, and I mean from, from illegals being uh, registered to vote and voting, all the way to digital voter fraud. If we don't, oh, oh, and a Secretary of State's office whose employees give uh, people the authority to waive law and to ignore law, which, by the way, is a violation of the state constitution. If we don't have elected officials who are willing to put a stop to that, then we're wasting our time. So I'm going to tell you, there will come a day when we will stop asking. We will stop asking. We will stop having those private conversations. As I like to tell people all the time, as an activist leader, you need to make sure that the hammer is not the first tool that you take out of your toolbox. You need to employ the golden rule. Don't do to someone else that you wouldn't want done to you. So if you've got a problem with an elected official, you go to them first. I always tell people, by the time you see Joanne Fleming get the hammer out of the toolbox, that means I have exhausted every other means to get them to do the right thing. But here's a couple of things. I'm not going to let them res uh, disrespect you. There's nothing that gets me on, bad, uh, on my bad side faster than elected officials who want you on speed dial when they are asking you to block walk, to write checks for them, and to make phone calls, and then they don't have the time of day for you when you want to talk about really tough, hard issues. Instead, they want to mimic what their consultants are saying is, oh, we've got to be pragmatic. I'm going to tell you, pragmatism divorced from principles, from first liberty principles, is the equivalent of just political expediency. And it is how we've gotten into the mess we're in in this country. We have to get back to the rule of law, and we have to press forward. Even if everybody else is telling us to stop, Northeast Tanner Tea Party, even if everybody's telling you to stop, you know what you believe in, and you don't have to ask anybody permission to do the right thing. You know that? You don't have to ask permission to do the right thing. So let's start, try to do what we can to do it God's way, and I, uh, I wish you all... Um, Godspeed with what you're doing. And, um, and I want to tell you that we really appreciate Fran coming to our summits, um, our grassroots conservative coalition summits. And uh, Fran is bringing back some information about our projects. And I will tell you, if you don't remember the success we had last session with Kelly defeating the Buffett bill, I hope that came back and told you our success with that. 
We also were very instrumental in getting a uh, special session out of Governor Abbott because he had just declared he was opposed to special sessions and you all helped us and leaders across the state. And I want to tell you the coalition is very important because it unites people around principles and it has grown 88% uh, since we started it in very early 2017. So. God bless you. I look forward to working with you all again through the years until God has another plan for us. But uh, I appreciate you so very much. And Julie, thank you for asking me to be here. And I'm ready to help you all any way that I can. Thank you.